What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a very special episode of Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic, and today's special project. This very shiny, very good condition Land Rover Defender. This one is for the Queen's funeral as a special tribute to say my personal goodbye and, you know, theoretically a goodbye from all of you as well. And I'd like to shout out and say a very special thank you to French Toast for helping me out with creating today's wonderful livery to go on this beautiful Land Rover Defender. It is looking absolutely incredible. I did get this from the very good auction house. We'll jump into the stats. I'm on the engine screen. I did get it from the very good auction house. You can see it is in very good condition. Just under 110,000 kilometers on there. Not too bad. And it is the pickup edition without the back cab. There is a reason for that. I will cover that in just a second. I didn't get a good deal for it at all. I paid 44,964 for this one and could sell it for 35,782, losing out on 9,182. That is probably the worst start I think I've had in a long time. That is pretty bad. But we should hopefully make that one back. Now, this one does currently have the V8 single overhead cam FME engine in it. I'm not going to keep that one in there. I've just done that one. I'm going to swap out to the AXK engine. I know we've done that quite recently, but I think all of these ones with the two carbs are a bit too much, and I don't want to go for the supercharged one. So we're going to go with the AXK today. We'll be putting performance parts in it, so that is going to change before we even start, and then change again by the time we finish with this one today. Now, for the reason as to why I've gone for a pickup, a Land Rover Defender, as my tribute car for our beautiful beloved queen may she rest in peace is well she had a big she was a big fan of land rovers she had a few herself a couple in this color a couple in green a couple in a blue color as well but the one that her beloved husband was carried to his final resting place in it was a modified land rover defender pickup it was the long wheelbase it should be out here single cab sadly we don't have that one so this is the best I can come up with at the moment and this is what I'm going to go for it will be in a green you know to represent that was the color of the defender he was taken in also color of defenders that she's had before but we also got some cool livery items to go with this one and although it doesn't look too dirty we are going to take this one over to the car wash and get this one cleaned up ready to start stripping everything down here we are then at the car wash let's get this lovely defender cleaned up ready to move on on with the beautiful bodywork we already know this bodywork is in excellent condition in a very nice black definitely not what we're going to stick with today though let's get the interior done get it back on the lift and then get that fme engine ripped out ready to swap in the axk first things first let's check for the oil pan and there it is hiding under there it is in there so let's get this one brought over and get all of this drained out there we go lovely and clean beautiful oil only the best for her majesty there we go out you go and let's start tearing all of this down then. Let's jump up and we'll go straight into this very angled drive shaft. Off you come. Cutting a little bit through the exhaust there, but nothing special. Out you come there. Nicely done. This should all be complete. So we should ex be expecting the starter, the gearbox, obviously all there, which it is. Fantastic. Out you come. And we'll get rid of these front exhaust sections as well. Off you go. I can't get out of that screen for some reason. That was weird. Down you go. And let's get this engine ripped out. We aren't keeping this one, so we're not going to bother stripping it down at all. I'm just going to sell it as it is, probably. Out you come, so that we can build up that AXK engine ready to drop in. But let's see what else we have in this lovely engine bay as we get started. So straight away, we've got a brake servo, fuse box, wishy-washy reservoir, the radiator and fan housing, power steering reservoir, coolant reservoir, an ECU, and a lovely air filter with the battery tucked in just down here. Nice little placement there. Let's get this fuel pump out of here, ready to go. We have got it. We'll get this battery out as well while we're down here. We'll move back up. Then we need to drain liquids from the brake servo, the wishy washy reservoir, the power steering reservoir, and the coolant reservoir. So right click, additional tools, a drain tool, click and hold, and I'll be back in just a moment. There we go. That's all the liquids drained. Let's start getting some bits out of here, out with the brake servo, the wishy washy reservoir, the power steering reservoir, the coolant reservoir. And the ECU, that was nice and simple. Off with the fan housing and that lovely radiator just there. Everything looks in great condition. Get the lid off this fuse box. We'll take a look. There we go. Fuses, they are there. We know we need to replace them because you can't repair them. Off with the clips. Out you come. Out you come. We'll get this lovely air filter out. So there we go. There we go. Don't know what color we're going to do with all of the internal parts yet. I haven't thought about that. That's everything apart from the fuse box, so let's jump down. Let's get one of these wheels off and check out all of this suspension underneath here. 
That is a big old wheel taking up most of my screen. There we go. Uh, so we've got this complete front drive axle. Can I zoom out a little bit? I can indeed. There we go. For a front wheel, well, for an all-wheel drive system, and looking pretty good. We've got some U-bolts on here. We've got the plate on here. We've got the back plating on the knuckle housing for this one. Inner and outer tie rod. And obviously the brake caliper. This one doesn't have a sway bar or a sway bar link or anything like that. So it is all complete there with the shock. The other side, we've got the back plating. We've got the in and out of tie rod. We've got the U-bolts and the plate all there. All the bushings, fantastic. Let's jump down the back and see what we've got going on down here. Out you come. Let's have a look. So it is the same one we did last time. And we've got both the U-bolts on here. We've got the plates. We've got the rubber bushing, all the spring and the shock, plus all of the Fancy little bits here on this side looking pretty good. Have we got it all on that side? U-bolts, plate, spring, shock, all there. Absolutely fantastic. This one is very complete. So I need to get on it now and get the rest of this all stripped out, starting with that fuse box wherever it is gone. I cannot find it up here somewhere, but I'll get that all stripped out. Where has that gone? Oh, just there. There we go. I'll get all of that stripped down. We'll get the engine sold off and the new engine all built up and ready to go. And then we'll work on this beautiful bodywork before we head over to the paint shop to check out the livery I've created as a special tribute today. That's everything repaired, replaced or upgraded, ready to go back on our beautiful tribute Land Rover Defender. But first of all, we need to strip this body down so we can get it all back to good shape again. So let's just start tearing and see where we end up. Out you come. Can I get you? Thank you. Out you come. Off with the front bumper, grabbing that license plate as well while we're there. Any of that part? No. Out with the windshield. Off with the door, off with the sidestep, fender, side skirt, whatever you want to call it. Keep going around. Rear window out, you come. Rear fender off of you come as well. Grab that license plate because that will not be staying. Out you come, out you come, out you come. Is that part of it? No, that's just part of the thing. That is the rear bumper though, so we will grab you out. Out with that fender. And um, what else have we got? Just the interior and this sidestep by the looks of it. That should be everything, but let's grab the interior out. I'm not sure what interior to throw back in this one yet. Don't think I'm going to keep that standard one there. Maybe we'll go for some modern Land Rover ones from the Land Rover DLC pack. But is that everything? Is that a frame? No, let's just find out. 1%. That's the wrong screen. That is everything. There we go. Fantastic. Now, the frame is only 84%, so it's not too bad at all. But I did spend quite a bit of money on this one. 10,000 short of profit. Oh. 800 700 very close but not quite there let's go to the shop and let's see what we have going on for the lovely defender lots of side scale options lots of steps now this is the only thing i would like to take off of this one i don't know if i really like any of them maybe try this one here or these ones here that don't look like they've got a step i don't want a step on mine is what i'm trying to get at the rest of it i think is pretty much just just going to stay as it was so that you can have rounded arches squared arches painted I'm going to keep with the same arches that are on there. A few different hood options. I am just going to keep with what is on there as well because I like that one. Windshield options, headlight options. Not sure about them. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, I don't want the sunroof. I don't want any of that. Do I have to put something on there? Uh, rear clamshell F. Mm, hopefully I don't have to put something on there because I don't particularly want any of that. Rear fenders, we're going to keep with the squared ones that are currently on there, so that's not too bad. And the headlights, we will come to. Obviously, the rear door, we have to go back and use this rear door. Pick up only. There we go. Hopefully, that overrides this part, so we don't need to do that. We'll find out in a bit. But there we go. I'm going to get all the bodywork repaired, replaced, or upgraded. I think there's only a couple of bits I want to change anyway. So most of it is going to be repaired. Here it is then. Time to get everything back on the beautiful Tribute Land Rover Defender, then get it over to the paint shop to check out today's livery. Let's just get started. I did keep most of this as it was, as I said I was going to, so we'll just move on. This all as it was, as it was. I did change these headlights to just a slightly higher up, the ones I was looking for. I wanted these yellow, but not way down in the corner, so sadly. They're not yellow, but they still look good. I'm very pleased with them. Looking awesome. I move around. Everything else is just as it was. Either repaired or replaced whatever was needed. I even kept the side steps, which I didn't want. But all the other ones that didn't have side steps just looked weird and didn't fit with the build. So we just left them as it was originally. So let's just carry on around. On we go. Rear tail lights. On you go. Rear door. On you go. Bumper. Nicely done. And the other lights. 
Uh, let's move around. Fender, door. We'll get all of this finished up and then we'll get some plates on there. We'll shove the interior in. I have changed that a little bit as well. That should be everything for the bodywork. I think so. Let's just get the plates on. I've gone for my virtual mechanic plates with a rest in peace, man. Because uh, that is what this vehicle is a tribute for. So that is the plates that are going on this one today. There we go. Let's jump in and let's get the interior in. Now, what I did do with the interior was I just swapped it for the actual Land Rover Defender stuff from the Land Rover DLC. Lovely, modern-looking Defender seats in there. Looking looking a little bit different. Bit more modernized. Bit more classy in there. I'm liking that. Is that everything? 99%. What am I missing? Let's find out. As it turns out, I wasn't missing anything. I hadn't repaired the rear bumper, which I definitely had repaired the rear bumper up to 100% because I'd cleared everything and then scrapped off everything that wasn't repaired. So anyway, but for some reason, it still said 80 something percent on it. So I went and repaired that again, got it back up to 100%. And now everything is at 100%. There we go. 100%, 100%, 100%. Fantastic. Let's get this one over to the paint shop and check out the livery I have created for this tribute today with the help of the master that is... French toast. So this is what I've gone for today then. We've got this off-white tin roof with a surround on the back there with the Union Jack straight in the middle uh, looking awesome. Then we've got Elizabeth II's uh, insignia, whatever you want to call that piece, in the middle there. And then gone but never forgotten in Eva Fender there looking pretty sweet. Then down the side we've got the uh, royal flag and the actual royal insignia there with this lovely little tribute piece I've put on the side there. We've got Paddington Bear sitting next to the grave with a little corgi just coming up next to it we know she loved her corgis and there's a lot went on with paddington bear and the queen they both loved marmalade sandwiches and then just a little piece that i uh created that i've made up uh, beloved daughter sister mother grandmother inspiration leader and our queen rest in peace your majesty just a few little words that i came up with together there i really like the look of this uh, there's a couple more bits just on the back to go through there. And uh, we got a lovely portrait of a very young, beautiful looking queen there. Forever in our hearts from 1926 till 2022. Very long reign. 96 years old when she passed away, bless her. 70 years on the throne of the longest British serving monarch that has ever lived. There we go. Looking fantastic. I need to figure out what colour I'm going to do the suspension. It will probably be green and a little bit of this sort of off goldy colour there. Looking quite nice. Maybe we'll do it in the old red, white and blue. We shall see. I haven't decided yet. So let's get on with that. Let's get this one back on the lift and start getting this beautiful Tribute Land Rover Defender all back together. That's everything painted, ready to go back on our beautiful Tribute Defender. I didn't go too over the top. I didn't go massively over, you know, board sort of thing. There is some black. There is some gold. There is some green in the suspension and then the engine's got a little bit of that off white as well so let's get on the shocks here are in black and gold i think they look pretty good quite happy with them adding a nice little gold element to our sort of a royal tribute land rover there is a few little bits more of gold in there but it is a lot of green so let's get started that front drive axle there in the green it does look pretty good i'm quite pleased with that the shock, obviously, we've already seen it in that black and gold looking quite nice. Let's get some of this front end pieces on because, well, you can't really get these done without this. So let's get all of this on and together. And then hopefully we can see how good this is going to look when it is all together, if I can get it there. So the solid axle control arm, I've done that one in a gold as well, looking quite nice. Just coming off the front there, just with enough of it showing through. It's quite a nice colour. It's not gold gold. It's more of like a, a bright yellow or a metallic -y yellow. I've done the leaf spring plate in the black because we've got the U-bolts uh, in that gold as well. Didn't want to throw too much gold under here. Didn't want it to be over the top, but I still quite like that. It's looking pretty good. Let's move on. Let's get some of this on and get to the brake caliper. Haven't done anything special with the brake caliper today. I just kept it in the green. Hopefully a match green. That is very close to a match green. Go away wheel a second. Not far off. A little bit different, but you do have to bring the brightness up on the brake calipers anyway to get them to match. So a little bit of green, a little bit of black, a little bit of gold going on on the suspension there at the front. Looking pretty good. Let's jump down the back if I can get there. There we go. Similar setup. We've gone for that central drive axle in the green there. Spring cap in the black to match the shocks at the front along with the shock as well. There we go. And uh, on with the gold spring there, looking pretty tasty. It is almost identical 
back here as it is at the front. So there we go. Let's just get on and get it all together and then carry on. Because I really do think the engine and the engine bay is sort of going to show off this build a little bit more. So let's just move around. Let's get these in before it asks us to put the wheel on, shall we? On you go. On you go. Did I miss the bushing at the front? I'll sort it out in a bit if I did. Doesn't matter. But there we go. On with the gold U-bolts as well. So a little bit of green, a little bit of black, a little bit of gold. Looking quite nice. Quite happy with it. I didn't want to go massive, majorly over the top, sort of in your face or anything like that with the underside of this one. Just a little bit to sort of incorporate it to the same colours of the build. There we go. So I'm going to crack on, get the other side done, get the rest of this suspension all finished up and get this exhaust all in here. Then we'll move on to that beautiful engine bay before we move over to get that beautiful AXK engine built with all the colours that we've got on there. Here we are then, all finished with the black, green and gold suspension. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Not too over the top, but just enough little elements that make it just a little bit more special than it would have been before. Looking fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I do love to hear from you, but let's move on and get this engine bay sorted out. In with the power steering reservoir, the coolant reservoir, and the ECU over here. Radiator in you go with your fan housing kit. Nicely done. Wishy-washy reservoir and the brake servo in you go loosely. We'll get the fuse box base in. I have done that one in the green. There is a little bit more to it than that. You'll see in a minute it is the same as the air filter. Base itself is green, looking nice. Then we got the actual air filter. And then the cover is in that off-white or beige or whatever you want to call that with some beautiful gold clips going on there. I just realized we've got the battery. Let's throw you in because I did manage to pick it up. On you go, on you go, and on you go. That's looking pretty good. Let's just quickly get this fuse box finished off before we move on to that engine though because I do think this looks quite good. And I think you might all want to see it just a little bit because I'm quite pleased with it. It's quite a nice little touch. Let's just get you in. In you, oh, I missed. In you go, in you go, and in you go. And then on with that lid, which is in that same off-white color there. You can see what I've sort of tried to replicate there. It is the same as the actual Land Rover itself. Green on the base with the white or off-white tin top. Looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. That engine bay is looking beautiful. I cannot wait for the engine to go in. So that's what we're going to go next. Go next. That's what we're going to go and do next. Get that beautiful engine built up. I just wanted to check that. It looks like it's going to lift over the top, but it doesn't. Fits really well. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go and get that AXK engine built. In we go then. Let's see what we've got going on. Let's throw on the main block. It is in that green. It is very dark on here, but it looks absolutely awesome. Very pleased with that. I will crack on and get all of the crankshaft and pistons and all the bits like that in. And I'll see you again in just a second. Let's go then. A few more bits to go on this engine to get it all finished off. The block and the oil pan are both in that matte sort of green. It is very dark on this engine, but it still looks good nonetheless. Let's crack on. Engine heads, they are in the green, but obviously they only paint on the inside as per normal. So let's get these on. On you go and on you go on this side as well. So we do have a bit of chrome on the outside of these ones that obviously just it is what it is, but it does kind of match. With the alternator, there we go, on you go, in your chrome, and the power steering pump also in its own chrome there, looking good. And the intake manifold also in chrome there. So you've got a lovely little chrome element. Also the throttle, I almost forgot the throttle, that one also can't be painted. So that just is what it is there, and we'll get the fuel filter on. Just because we're here, there we go. Let's crack on a little bit. So we need to get all of these camshafts in, in you go, in you go, and then the cam gears on. So I'll get all of them done along with the spark plugs and these exhaust manifolds, and I'll be back in just a moment. That's that all taken care of. Let's move on to this front end. We've got a couple of belts to go on here, and then a big old timing cover, which I have kept in that same matte green. They're looking pretty good. There is some more colour to go on this one, don't you worry. Oil filter also in that green, just to go with the block. I tried it with the gold, it didn't look very good, and also tried it with the off-white colour as well. It didn't look very good on there. So let's move up then. Speaking of the off-white, engine head covers are in that colour. And I really do think it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks really good on there. And I'm hoping it's going to look once look good once we get it dropped into the car. Let's just get the other one on very quickly. On you go. There we go. Let's move inside. So we've got ignition coils to go in here as well. It's hard to see them in that off-white colour, but it is what it is. There you go. And then also coil covers on the top in gold. The plus splash of gold on the top of this one looking fantastic let's get the other side done as well 
and then I'll move on and get all them rollers onto the front of this engine so we can get this one all finished off. There you go. All the other cool colours on. There you go. So you've got the green, the beige, and the gold on there, or off-white, whatever you want to call that, looking pretty sweet. Water pump can't be painted, so it just is what it is, um, along with the crankshaft and the rest of this stuff on the front here. So I'll get all of this together. We will be back in a second, and then we'll get that engine all finished up. There we go. All the belts, all the rollers on. Just one belt tensioner to go. In you go. In the gold. Just for a splash more on the front of this engine. Looking pretty sweet. Few bits to go. Literally just them fuel rails. So let's get them in. I have just kept these in the green to sort of match with the colour theme of the engine there. They should look great in the engine bay. And that, I believe, is this engine all finished. Ready to be dropped inside our lovely little tribute defender. So I'll grab some pictures. We'll get it off the stand. We'll get it dropped in before we get it outside in the sun. Here we go then. Ready to drop this one in. And let's get it off the stand. And let's get it into our tribute defender. I love the fact that that just happened to jump us out facing perfectly the right way. So let's get you dropped in. Inside you go. Let's have a look. Yeah, see, I quite like that. You've got the beige colours, the off-white colour matching with the air intake. And also the fuse box there. With the splashes of gold sort of going with this little bit of detail on the front and obviously the insignia on the hood there looking pretty sweet i'm quite pleased with that do let me know what you guys think of that engine in the comments i think it's turned out great it could have been a, maybe a little bit more i'd have liked to have get this piece gold if we could have and then i probably would have changed a few other pieces if we could have but i still think it looks great let's get it up in the air though we need to get that gearbox and the drive shaft in what a lovely, lovely livery I've made there. Thank you for your help. Again, a French toast it is looking beautiful. Let's crack on then. Let's get this gearbox in. I have matched this one to the block there. You can see it is the exact same green. Looking fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. And the starter, we did that one in the gold. Just for a splash more there as we're going along. Let's get these front exhaust sections in you go. In there you go. And then the drive shaft in. Then I've just got some wheels to do, some liquids to top up, and then we can get this one outside ready to check out before we head over to the dyno and see what power this one's got today. Here we are then, all are finished with our Tribute Land Rover Defender, and I think it is looking fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Have I gone too over the top? Have I not? Could I have done more to make this a little bit more special? I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Thank you again for your help, French Toast. And also, thank you, Payne, for a beautiful modded Land Rover Defender. Slightly older than the ones that came in with the DLC, which is why I went for this one. I wanted a bit more of an old school look. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Nice little tributes down the side. Some royal insignia, gone but never forgotten. And then obviously the beautiful portrait of the very young queen on the back there. Nicely fitted into the little section there with forever in our hearts and the years she was alive. God rest her soul. But anyway, moving on, let's talk some more about this. Well, the inspiration for this particular build came from a couple of things. The first being Prince Philip's Land Rover Defender hearse that he had custom built or somebody had custom built. was obviously the long wheelbase back out to here to fit a coffin in the back. That was the main inspiration. That is why the wheels are green, because the wheels were green on that one. Also, partly the reason as to why the body is green because the body was green on that one, but also the Queen herself has had a few green defenders, including one with a white top there. Not quite the same as this one. She's had a few different ones over the years, so there would have been a lot to choose from. But this one it was the closest to the hearse for Prince Philip, her beloved husband, when he sadly passed away too. So it kind of ties the two together for me in my own personal way. And I just got to make a nice little tribute to go with it. So, yes, this is what it is. I think it looks fantastic. I'm very proud of it. And, uh, again, thank you for your help, French Toast, of making this look as good as it does. Talking about spacings and different design elements and things like that. So, thank you for that. On to these rims. Now, obviously, I did change these rims from what came on it. I changed these to the rim at 35 because they were the ones that closely matched the uh, base car that I was aiming this one to be on. And obviously they are finished in the green. I've made these a slightly bit bigger. So these are an 18-inch rim with a 265 width and a 60 profile. So the rim itself is a bit bigger. The profile is a bit lower. And it is the same all the way around. Just in case you didn't quite catch that, it is an 18-inch rim on this one. 265 width on the wheel there with a 60 profile. And you get this sort of nice gap. So you could still go off-roading with it if you wanted to. Sort of a very nice ride height on there. 
The suspension all in that green and gold with a few splashes of black, as you can see on there, looking beautiful. Absolutely love this one. And then the piece I love the most, that engine, I think that looks absolutely fantastic. I'm so pleased with how that turned out. It is unbelievable. But let's jump in the Defender and see what this one sounds like. Also, we swapped it to the modern Defender seats in there just because, well, they're a bit more comfortable. Lovely interior. Excellent job by Payne. It looks fantastic in here. The reflection on the rear windows is a bit bizarre, but that's more to do with the tinting than anything else. But let's get this one started up. We all know the AXK engine is a beefy, mean-sounding engine. Perfect for this kind of experience. Now, obviously, we did still pit performance parts in this one and trying to still keep up with making it as fast as we can, even for the special one-off tribute build. So let's head over to the dyno and see what power this one's got. Here we are then on the dyno with the Land Rover Defender pickup and its V8 AXK engine. 372 base horsepower on that one, higher than the original engine. But what have we added today with our performance parts? A gain of 315 horsepower, 85%. That's pretty good. Bringing our total up to 686 horsepower. Am I going to regret the off-road tyres, even though it's four-wheel drive? We'll find out in just a moment. But before we head over... Let's have a look at the gearbox tuning setup for today. 3.7 ratio, 71 kilometers an hour in first gear, up to a listed 453 kilometers an hour in top gear. I don't think we'll be quite getting there. Won't be setting any records with this one today, uh, but it is a fun car to build, and this one has been an absolute pleasure. So let's get onto the track and see what she'll do. Here we are then on the speed track with our beautiful Tribute Land Rover Defender, looking absolutely stunning. Very pleased with how this one's turned out. What speed will we get out of it today, though? Let's jump in and let's find out. Let's go off the line. Four-wheel drive, off-road tyres today, though. But a big old V8 AXK engine in there. Doing pretty well so far. There's 250 already. I'm a bit surprised by that. Where will we end up? Already smashed through 300. This is definitely a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Let's keep going. Can we get up to 400? It's doubtful, but can we? Come on, little Land Rover. You might be able to do it. It's bone pass 350. Coming up to 370, 372 from the Land Rover Defender pickup, the Queen Elizabeth Tribute Edition. Here we are then, all finished with the beautiful Painter mod, the Land Rover Defender in a very custom one-off Queen at Tribute livery. Not the band, the actual Monarch, who sadly passed away and has had her funeral today. Uh, as you guys are watching this today, obviously, I am making this the day before, so for me, it is a tomorrow. But it is looking absolutely beautiful. I really do think this Land Rover Defender looks stunning. I'm so pleased with the work I've done. And again, thank you for your help, French Toast. I, I just can't say it enough. Well done, Payne, for a beautiful mod, as always. Link to the mod in the description below. Um, this livery is obviously not with it. I have created it myself. If you do want it, do let me know. I'm sure I can maybe get this one onto the workshop, potentially. Um, I just don't want to get in trouble for using Royal Insignias when I really shouldn't have been. But there we go. Never mind. It does look absolutely fantastic. I am very, very pleased with this one. We aren't going to sell it, but we are still going to go through the motions and see if we made a profit from it and all things like that. So let's jump into that. Now, if you were around at the beginning, you saw that I bought the car for 44964 and was already losing out on profit by a good 9,000-ish, a little bit more than 9,000. I have since spent another, a further 44,946. That's weird. 44,964 is what we paid. 44,946 is what I've spent on it. Paying our total spend at 89,910, almost a 90,000 pounds Land Rover Defender. I'm sticking with pounds this time because that is what it is. Can we make a profit though? Let's jump in and let's find out. As I say, we definitely aren't selling this one. This is going to stick around, but it's always good to find out. All 100% complete, just still shy of 110,000 kilometers. I didn't need to do that much driving to sort this one out. Obviously, we did swap in that AXK engine, which increased it from a 240 mark up to the 370. And then our performance parts took it from 372 to 686. A lovely gain of 85%. Absolutely fantastic. But would we have made a profit? No, no, we wouldn't have by only just 89,201 is our sale price and our total cost was 89,910, which means we are losing out on 709. But if I didn't get conned at the beginning by 9,182, 
we definitely would have made a profit from this one. If we were going to sell it, but we are not, this one is going to stick around for just a little while longer. Absolutely beautiful, and I really do love this. I also don't have a car in the shop for what's coming next. I'll quickly go in. There is nothing there because the next car I'm going to be making, some of you are probably expecting a Bolt Reptilia R2, but I've had no internet for most of last week. So I haven't had a chance to actually get in and make a config or anything like that or do anything cool that I wanted to do. So I have had to skip this one. This will be the first one I have missed because I would have done that for today's video. Then obviously would have bumped that back to Friday's video and so on and so forth because of this lovely project here that we've done. This had to be done today, bearing in mind that the lovely, lovely Queen's funeral was today. God rest her soul. RIP, all of that. She was a lovely, lovely lady and ruled this country it was an inspiration to many a uh, very wonderful lady indeed i'm very sad that she has passed but we do have a new king now so long live the king the reason i don't have a car to work on next is because today is also the release date of the aston martin dlc which would have been absolutely amazing if that billboard had just changed to aston martin as i said that obviously it did not so on the wednesday's video we should hopefully have the four new Aston Martins in the garage. This will still be here as well. We'll move some other things around just for the time being. This one's going to go in the shop and next to where my Toyota was. Um, and it's going to sit there for just a little while longer while we uh, play around with a few different other videos on this channel. Until we get up to 250 subscribers when we're going to pull all of our old cars out. Some of them are obviously already here. This one will be in the shop. This one we'll take a look at as well. See what we've done and see if we can get some increases in these Things like that, maybe a better livery, not for this one. Although we may change this to the rusted patina look, which is what I actually asked French Toast to made, make, which he did make, but he also made this one, which was even more beautiful for me. So we left it at that. But yes, if you want to help with that, do consider clicking the subscribe button. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope you have enjoyed today. Obviously, in the UK, a very big day of mourning. So you know enjoy is probably the wrong choice of words but i hope you had a good day nonetheless thank you so much for watching and as always i will see you in the next one goodbye rest in peace your majesty